All right, this is a lecture on um, physical science section 2.1. So in the top left hand corner, you're going to write 9413. Top right hand corner. Um, oh, hope it's still working. I move back over there. You're going to write um, the page number, which I can't remember at the moment. Uh, middle of the page, you're going to write standards of measurement. All right, so this is section 2.1 and 2.2. All right, so uh, let's see here, switch over my screen. All right. Um, as we discussed in class today, um, measurements are are uh, something that that we use to um, kind of get an idea of what's going on around in our world. Um, measurements have two parts. Measurements are a quantity that um, have a number. That's the first part. And a unit. That's the second part. Okay? Um, these measurements are not terribly useful um, if we don't have something to compare them to. Um, and so we need things like standards uh, to compare them to. A standard is an exact quantity. All right, exact quantity that people use for comparison. Now, um, the examples of this are in in uh, there's a center that manages these standards, and they have a standard inch, an exact measurement of what an inch is, exact measurement of what a a meter is exact measure of a gram and a, a pound and all the other things that we use. Um, they have exact quantities that we compare stuff to uh, for those. If we're talking about a measurement, we have things such as three inches or uh, five pounds or seven liters. Uh, those are all examples of measurement. We have a number and a set of units. Yeah, now, if I told you that um, the table that I'm working at is eight wide, it wouldn't make any sense to you. Um, we need to have a unit, and um, might say eight feet wide, and so we need to have both a number and the unit. Okay, so all right, so we've talked about um, what a uh, standard is, what a measurement is. Let me show you an example of um, of some standard units. Uh, let me get a copy of this picture here. One moment. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. All right, so. Um, here you will see uh, table 2.2, which happens to be a, uh, a table of prefixes, symbols, and meanings uh, for um, for standard units, uh, the SI system. So these are the this is the standard system, um, the system that we pre oops the system that we use in science is primarily this one. Um, You'll see on the left-hand side that we have several letters, or for several uh, prefixes, and we have a symbols in the second column. Third column is the meaning of them. Fourth column is what we multiply by, and then the fifth column is multiplier and exponential. Okay, so the first one's called tera. Symbol for that is a T. You might hear of this in terms of uh, hard drive size. Uh, it's not uncommon now for people to have tera, terabyte hard drives. 
Um, you hear the same thing for gigabyte. That's another common uh, term that we hear um, in relation to uh, computers and their storage. Megabyte and kilobyte are also common. Uh, you also think of kilo in terms of um, kilometers or kilograms, which you might have heard of. Um, these are thousands of our original unit. Hecto and deca are smaller than that. Hecto is 100, deca is 10. If we're going below 1, between, um, yeah, we're going smaller than 1, if we divide by 10 to the 10th place, so we divide by, uh, we multiply by this number or divide by 10, uh, that's called deci, then we have centi, such as centimeters or millimeters. Uh, micro is divided by 10 to the 6th, or uh, sorry, it's multiplied by 10 to the negative 6. Um, pico is, 10, is related to 10 to the negative 12, as you see here. Femto is 10 to the negative 15. Addo is 10 to the negative 18. Um, what I need you to know off this table is I need you to be able to uh, give the symbol uh, for each prefix. So if I give you, um, let's put an example over here. If I give you Terra, I expect you to know the symbol for that is T. If I tell you that you're dealing with Centi, I expect you to know the symbol for that is a lowercase c. Okay? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I need you to know all those prefixes and symbols. I also need you to know the exponential multiplier. Okay? This is 10 to the 12, 10 to the 9, et cetera, et cetera. So if I say, um, you know, what is the multiplier for um, milli? you would say that is 10 to the negative 3. Okay, this is table 2.2 .2 in your textbook. If you can't see what it is on this image very well, I would suggest you refer, reference the one in the book. It is, uh, has better quality. You can actually see what the numbers are. Okay, that's just I see prefix system. Um, we will be doing a quiz on this in the next couple of days. Uh, actually, I think it's next week. So. Um, <clears throat> keep this in mind and uh, start studying this now uh, using note cards or some other method that works for you. Uh, next thing we need to talk about is uh, the, the base units. Those prefixes are used to modify um, what we call base units, the basic unit that we use in our um, in science. Let's see if I can expand this here. Okay, SI base units. Here are some of the basic, the, the main examples. You'll want to copy this table down. Uh, you're welcome to pause the video and, and work with that um, as you see fit. You see here what we have length, which is like distance. We use the base unit of meters in SI. In, in SI mass is similar to what we think of as weight, um, but doesn't involve uh, gravity, which we talk about with weight. So mass is kilograms, uh, temperature, the base unit is Kelvin, uh, time. So in Kelvin, I could, the base unit in, in our normal system is Fahrenheit. But in this case, we're using a different base unit, um, Kelvin. For uh, us, the normal standard base unit for our length is inches. Uh, mass is pounds. Whereas time for us, seconds, is the same thing as they use in SI. The amount of substance. The unit we use is mole, uh, amperes, the unit for electric current, luminous intensities, candela. The kind of thing I would expect you to be able to do is if I say length, you give me the SI unit um, that's associated with that, you would say meter is the base unit. So base SI unit is meter. If I said uh, amount of substance, you would need to be able to tell me that the uh, base unit is mole. Okay, um, hope that is clear. Uh, next page. <clears throat> well, this is still still on the same page you're doing your notes on. Um, if you need more space at the bottom of your page to continue, um, you're welcome to grab a sheet of paper and attach it to the bottom of the page that we're currently doing our notes on. Please see your. Uh, <clears throat> please see the. 
What's it called? Ah, call, uh, please see the packet for exact page numbers and where I would specifically would like this material to be placed. All right. Um, talking about SA Banks units, let's talk about uh, length real quick. Um, by the way, length is the distance covered by a straight line. <clears throat> connecting two points. <clears throat> All right, so that's the definition of a length. Um, <clears throat> let's try to practice a conversion uh, with this real quick. If I say that I have... Um, mm -mm, let's say I have three meters and I want to convert this into centimeters. All right, if we go back up and look at our chart here, the multiplier for centimeter was 10 uh, 0 0.01 or 10 to the negative 2. So, um, the if I have 3 meters uh, and I'm going to centimeters. We're going to compare that to the situation where we would have three centimeters and we're going to uh, meters. Let's first do the second one. Uh, it'll be simpler based on the information they gave us. If I have three centimeters, I take my three centimeters and I multiply by the multiplier that's up here. The multiplier happens to be 0 0.01, so that would be there, be, therefore be. 0 0.03 meters. Or if you do it the other way uh, using the exponential multiplier, it's 3 centimeters times 10 to the negative 2, which is therefore 3 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Okay? So both of those are, are congruent. These two numbers are the same. Uh, they just have different notations. Now, if we do the opposite, we're going from a meter to a centimeter. We do the opposite of this number. So, uh, what is the what? Um, so instead of this is uh, this is by the way this is uh, one hundredth. Let me spell that right. Hundredth. Okay. What we're going to do then is do 3 meters, and we're going to multiply by the opposite of 100th, which is 100. Okay? Gives us 300 centimeters. All right, let's, let's practice this one more time uh, on the right side here. If I started with um, 6... Uh, meters. Oh, actually, if I started with uh, six kilometers and I was going two meters, so this is from something that is not the base unit to the base unit, I take the number they gave us and I multiply by the multiplier, which in this case happens to be or kilometers is 1,000 or 10 to the third. Okay, six kilometers times 10 or times 1,000 equals 6,000 meters. Okay, six kilometers by in a similar way 10 to the third equals six times 10 to the third meters. Okay, that is how you would do it. In this case, if I was instead Box these real quick so it's easier to see them. If I instead was going from the base, uh, from base to sorry, six meters, two kilometers, if something is not the base unit, I would therefore um, do the opposite of multiplying by a thousand, which is dividing by a thousand. 
So that would be 6 meters divided by 1,000, which equals 6, uh, sorry, uh, that's not right, which would equal 0 0.006 kilometers. Or, the other way, 6 meters divided by 10 to the third equals 6 times 10 to the negative 3 kilometers. All right, so that's the kind of the basic idea for that. Um, you're right over here on the side. Um, this is convert to base. The bottom one is convert from from base. Okay? So that's how these are split up. Draw a line through there if you would like. All right, so that's conversions uh, to and from base units. All right, so let's talk about uh, a next, the next kind. Um, mass. Mass, by the way, is the amount of matter So mass was the amount of matter in an object. So once again, the units, the SI unit for mass is a kilogram. That's the base unit, also written as kilogram. All right. Um, we usually measure this with a balance um, or a scale. Now it turns out that um, weight does not equal mass. Um, mass, mass is as we said above the amount of matter, while uh, weight is how hard gravity pulls on an object. It's related to mass because uh, if, a, if an object has more matter then it would you know tend to um, be pulled on more strongly by gravity but um, other than that it, it also depends on gravity. If I go to the moon um, so uh, if I take myself, my mass on the moon, uh, well, I say my mass on Earth is probably somewhere in the, uh, oh, let's see, well, okay, so let's do weight. My weight on Earth is like 190 pounds, okay? And my mass, however, is, um, hold on, quick calculation in my head, uh, probably around let's half of that 100 it's probably around 80 kilograms okay that's my mass on earth now if i go to the moon take myself to the moon um my weight on the moon would be significantly less than it is here um it'd probably be somewhere around 60 pounds because the moon's gravitational pull is so less so much less whereas my mass would still be 80 kilograms I would still have the same amount of matter in myself um, but my weight would be less because my gravity the gravity present um, would be less all right by this point you're probably on to your uh, blank page which is at the bottom um, of your is going to be attached to the bottom of your page uh, that we are currently doing notes on. We also have uh, time. Uh, the uh, SI unit for time is uh, for time is seconds. Okay, so SI unit for time is seconds. 
Um, and and so it's kind of similar to the way we use seconds for uh, other. The other one that's that we talk about a lot is temperature. Um, it turns out that that in normal life we use um, Fahrenheit, so that uh, the standard unit. Uh, sorry, the, the unit that we use in normal life is Fahrenheit. That's not right. Didn't spell that right. Sorry, my spelling of Fahrenheit's a little rusty right now. Um, Fahrenheit. Okay, we use Fahrenheit in normal life. That's an A. Oh boy. Having trouble with this control right now. Okay, uh, in SI units, we use Kelvin. Now, it turns out that Kelvin is related to another unit you've probably heard of, Celsius. For Celsius, when water freezes, Celsius is zero degrees C. Okay, Kelvin, uh, the temperature is 273. K. That's the uh, temperature in Kelvin that water freezes at. It's still the same physical temperature. Water doesn't change all of a sudden because it changes your units. But the units, this units here are, are different. So 273 is a different number. Um, however, for uh, water boiling, you can find, uh, you will find that Kelvin, the value is 373 Kelvin, whereas Celsius is 100 degrees Celsius. You might notice here that there's a hundred degrees difference in each of these. The unit sizes are the same. Um, whereas for Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas uh, boiling's at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What this ends up meaning is that um, the units for Fahrenheit, unit size for Fahrenheit is smaller than the units unit size for Celsius. They cannot be easily, they, they can be converted between, but they are not, um, you can't just do addition, subtraction, you have to do some multiplication and division to figure it out. So unit size on Fahrenheit is larger, unit size on SI is, is uh, sorry, unit size on Fahrenheit is smaller, unit size on SI unit is bigger. All right, one of the other cool things we can do with this is because Kelvin, uh, we can actually get to absolute zero, um, absolute zero is at zero degrees Kelvin which corresponds with where all motion stops there is no rotation there is no uh, movement at all um, if all motion stops we're at zero degrees Kelvin and that's called absolute zero which is a, a, a place that we've been trying to get to for many years however we have not succeeded at reaching it ever all right, so um, one of the things we need to talk about, the last thing we need to talk about, by the way, is what we call derived units. Now, derived units are things where we combine other units. Um, an example being volume. In volume, we combine other length measurements. We take a centimeter and we multiply it by a centimeter and we multiply it by another centimeter and we get centimeters cubed. This is a derived unit. A unit that is a combination of measurements. Okay, um, example of this being, well, if we have one liter, in one liter this is actually a combination of uh, centimeters. So the centimeter times centimeter, oh sorry, uh, a de deciliter. These are actually combinations of des uh, des uh, no decaliters. Decaliters. It's da actually. Hold on. Uh, let me start over. One milliliter is actually equal to uh, centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. So despite the fact that this is not a cubed, it is actually equal to something that is um, that is a combination of measurements. All right, another example of this is density. 
In density, we combine units of mass and volume. And so we do uh, 3 grams per 1 milliliter. We combine those, that gets us a density, which we would actually write as um, grams per milliliter. So we could write it this way as well. Um, so these are some examples of derived units. Derived units, once again, are defined here, a unit that is combined, a combination of measurements. All right. Um, if you have any questions about that, send me an email, and I will let you know. As far as I know, that's it for the day. Have a good day.